Look at the fangs on this guy. <sighs> What's up guys? We're out on the river, very flooded river, and we're gonna try to catch fish with a venomous snake for bait. Now this snake is obviously dead. This is a cottonmouth. Look at those fangs on this guy. Perfectly curved, hinged, hypodermic needles with a very nasty toxin stored up near the tip of my thumb right here. Finding dead snakes is not that hard. If you patrol the roads enough at night, eventually you're gonna find one that got run over. So we've got a dead cottonmouth that we're gonna use as bait. I'm a little bit worried about the river being so high, but I think that cottonmouth has been dead for a few days, so it smells real strong. We're gonna throw it out there right on the current line and see if a big fish wants to pick it up. So I'm gonna hook him through the back to start because obviously this is such a long bait. It's gonna be awkward if I hook it through the mouth. I thought about doing that first, but if we hook it through the mouth, there's almost two feet worth of bait the fish has to swallow before the hook is in his mouth. So we'll go right through the center. I need to be very careful with this. It is a, it is a venomous snake and I do not want to get bitten by a venomous snake again. So even just touching the mouth inadvertently, you know, we could prick ourselves on one of the fangs, uh, get a little bit of venom in our system and ruin the rest of our year. All right, let's go right on the current line. There we go. Don't need to go super far. I just want it to sink kind of straight down from where it is. You guys can see this fish active right there. All right, so here's the difficult part, is because everything is so flooded, we gotta scout out a new landing strategy. The spot I would normally go to uh, is completely under the water, so much that I can't access that point. It's just, it used to be a hill that flattened out into a slope, and then at the end of the slope is where I would land the fish. Now, it's just a steep hill going directly into the water. I can't land a fish there. So if we hook a good one, man, I'm trying to that point right there, we could do it. That'd be really tough to fight him around this whole snag. Cause you gotta remember, there's a tree under the water right there. And then there is a tree under the water right there. And it kind of extends this way. So we'd have to bring him around close enough to to stay out of the tree, but just far enough to stay out of the rocks that are under the water. In between the tree and the rocks over here, we'd have to get around that big, huge mess of plants there. Maybe I could, maybe I could skirt him inside of it and use him to my advantage, land him on the inside of it. So I'll walk along the, I will come inside. This is what we'll do. We'll try to fight them around the hill, go inside these plants, around the loop to our landing spot over there. That's the plan at the moment. Obviously, if we catch a fish that weighs less than 100 pounds, we'd probably handle it right here. If it weighs more than 100 pounds, you know, especially if it's a big one, like, you know, seven feet long or something like that, we're gonna have to do that plan. And it's gonna be hard, but let's see if we can make it happen. After many hours of waiting, we have a run. This is a very fast run. Hopefully, it is a fish. That's the thing about a bait like a snake. There's not a lot of weight to it, so a lot of animals could run at speed with a, a bait the size of a snake in its mouth, you know, a relatively small one like we're using. But this fish is moving very, very quickly, so I am I'm hoping it is a big, big gar and not something small like a catfish or something uh, like a turtle. This one's moving real quick. Look at him go, look at him go. God, this fish is really booking it. This has been our first uh, run in about three and a half hours of fishing, so really important that we uh, we hook this fish well when we go to set the hook. 
We're gonna give it all the time it needs. We got plenty of line on here, about 300 yards worth. Just gotta keep feeding it line. You gotta feed it line ahead of the last hook set. So somewhere in here is the last hook set. And that's where you would have dug the line down into the coils by, you know, stopping a 150, 200 pound fish. You gotta find that before the fish does or it'll run into a wall basically. Imagine trying to feed someone line that, you know, they don't realize you're on the other end. If there's a, a bit of that line that's dug into the spool and they feel it, what are they gonna do? They're gonna drop the line, realizing that someone's trying to get them. God, this, this fish is just going. Really, really going now. We're gonna give it oh, not too much more. I gotta get my feet set real well here. Cause I don't wanna slip in the mud when I set this hook. All right, we're gonna have to do this now. He's getting too close to that snag. Here we go. I think we missed him. Well, I can't tell. No, we're on. We're on. Hang on. There was a lot of slack. Oh, it feels like we're around a, sni a snag. Okay, so there's a fish on the end of the line. Yeah, see, he's fighting now. But it does feel like he's gone around something, which sucks. Okay, hang on. Whew. We're getting lined back, so we're not stuck on, yeah, see, some head shakes. It's a fish, definitely a fish. Oh, I see him. I see him way out there. It's always a good sign. Ooh, it's always a good sign when you can see him from that far away. Yeah. It's big. And, oh, that's good, that's good. We so I saw the fish come up, and I saw the line going all the way out to him. So we are over or clear of what I think, uh, the snag I think we were in before. So now we're clear of the snag and we're just fighting a fish on a barbless hook. So still, oh, still a good chance that I'll throw it because that's the risk you run with barbless. You know, fish safety goes up, but the chance that fish is gonna get off goes up too. There, oh, I keep feeling the line almost like it's going slack for a second. But then he's there, and this is a heavy fish, guys. He's kind of just going side. Oof, I see him. I see him. Ooh. I think this is a fish. That was very dark coloration. That was a very dark coloration. Almost, almost like a catfish. But I mean, who knows, it could be a gar. We'll see. My worst fear, my worst fear was that it would be a gigantic soft shell turtle. Because a lot of the times they'll run at speed and they'll feel like a giant fish when you're bringing them in because of their shape. Usually when you hook a turtle, like a soft shell, what happens is uh, you pull the bait out of his mouth and you're actually hooking like the foot or something. So basically imagine pulling in a giant disc sideways. That's why they're so hard to pull in. They'll fool you. Not, still not sure what we have yet. <laughs> Let's see, getting closer. It's by that point. <clears throat> oh, so nerve wracking. You know, I, see, I keep seeing an odd, something keeps flipping out of the water in a weird way. I don't like that. It's 
what turtles do a lot of the times. It's them turning in a circle. I really don't want this to be a soft shell. Please don't be a soft shell. If it's a giant catfish, I'll be more than happy with that. It's coming a little bit easier now. Got to be careful because remember, anytime you're anytime you're dealing with flooded uh, flooded waters, it's easy to forget the snags you knew about before. But I got to keep him clear of the one that's right there. I still have no idea what's on the end of this, or if it's even a a fish. See, big ripples, big ripples. Starting to worry about this one, actually. Starting to worry about this. I think, I think we might have a turtle on. At least be a catfish. Give me that much. Whatever it is, it's kind of coming around. Oh, damn it. I just saw the line do a full circle, and that's it means it's either a catfish or a turtle. I'm thinking it's a turtle. Please don't be a turtle. I think it's a turtle. Let's see. Oh, what do we got? Hang on, what is that? Oh, it's a it's a decent, oh look at that, it's a big catfish. Hey. hey all right, all right, all right, all right. I'll take that. Oh man, he's actually really nice. Oh, that's why you gotta be careful fishing ah, in the mud. Look at that. He's a nice one. The catfish out here all seem to have this lighter coloration than the catfish oof, I catch in the bayous, I've noticed. I'm putting my glove on because I'm just gonna whip him in. I'm gonna try to get him to that rock over there and we'll just grab him by the mouth. Hey, I like that. Big blue, big beautiful river catfish. Come here, beautiful. Come here, son. He's nice. He's nice. That's a that we, oof. He's fat. <laughs> That's a fat fish. All right. Come here. Come here. I got you, buddy. Come here. I know. If you're wondering what that noise is, it's called. Whoa. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, hang on a second. He has been attacked on the way in by something. Let me show you. It's a nice catfish, man. He's real heavy. Well over 20. And look at the side right here under the pelvic fin. Look at that. What did that? Something had a go at him on the way in. Was it a big gar? For my money, maybe. This is a pretty big fish for a gar to go after though. It might have been a reflex strike. I know, buddy. Alligator gar don't typically, even the giant ones, don't prey on fish this big. So I don't know what that was, but I want to get him back pretty quick. He will survive that wound. I, it's not too deep. I can just see the muscle tissue. I can't see any organs, so he'll live. Beautiful fish, let's get him back. Hear that? That's cool. I know, buddy. You got this. There he goes. There he goes, writing himself. Really, really interesting. Anytime you get a big fish in like that and it's got a piece taken out of him, it just reminds you how unforgiving these environments can be, how tough these animals have to be for a reason. I have no idea what did that. There were, along the side of the bite, if you look back at the footage, I noticed, because my attention is mostly on unhooking them as quick as possible, but I noticed that uh, there were a couple of marks, individual marks alongside that big cut. It looks like maybe a, a series of teeth found the mark, so it is quite possible that a big gar just reflexively had a go at him on the way in, maybe. Or it could have been a small alligator, you know, you never know. Or even a big alligator just missing the mark by, you know, a couple inches. 
food chain is crazy, yeah? You literally throw anything dead in a river, eventually you're gonna get a catfish. So I'm not surprised we caught that. I am very pleased to see one that big. Now here's the thing, I don't have any more, any more snakes. <laughs> I just have the one. Uh, Cause it took me forever to find that one on the road. So I just have that one bait. So I'm gonna live in this moment and enjoy that catfish for what it is, which is an incredible, powerful, top of the line river predator. Just incredible. Just incredible what will eat what. Fish will eat snakes and something try to eat that fish. All right, let's, uh, let's not spend that much time right next to the water talking about how uh, an alligator might have had a go with that fish on the way in. The chances of an alligator going at us are like very, very slim. I've only ever had that happen once and uh, it wasn't uh, predation, it was like defensive. I was bitten by an alligator once, defending itself from me trying to catch it. And I was attacked by two other alligators. In both instances, there were young ones around. So I've never had an alligator try to eat me. Crocodiles also do that. Alligators very rarely, if ever, unprompted. But anyway, beautiful animal. If you guys want some cool merch to support the show, Tribor Outdoors makes the best. I've got the link in the description. And then, big shout out. I shouted them out in the last video, but we didn't catch a fish on the rod. Shout out to the guys at Brackish Water Customs. They gave me this rod. It's a custom rod. You guys can see the, uh, the emblem of the alligator guard there. They put that on just for me. Doing its job today, man. <sighs> on a lot of days, catching one fish is kind of sad, but on a weird bait challenge day, it's, uh, I'll take it. Like, subscribe, all the good stuff. Let me know in the comments what you guys want to see more of. Uh, if you have other ideas for bait challenges, let me know. If you're disappointed that I did not use a live snake, um, I just like snakes too much to do that. Also, as I said before, I've been bitten by a venomous snake once, and once is enough. So sorry that we're not going to make that happen. But let me know down below. You got an idea for something you think would make a good video. Tell me. We'll see if we can do it. More is coming. Stay tuned. And until it's here, I will see you guys later.